right now taking a look at these um, just like before I need to get the X by itself so let's move that number so I subtract 4 on both sides I end up with a negative 2x squared equals 8 times so I'm going to divide by negative 2 so I end up getting x squared equals negative 4 and I would square root both sides to get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. Well, remember, negative 4. I pull it out and make it an i root 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So I actually get as my final answer x equals plus or minus 2i is my final answer for that one. Um, that problem is just like the one we did before. There we go. Let's try another one like the one I just did. Um, Got to get the numbers on one side and the x's on the other. So let's cross that out. So I end up with a 4x squared equals negative 20. 4 times x squared, I divide by 4 on both sides to get x squared equals negative 5. I would square root both sides, so I end up getting x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5. Now, like I said before, when you have a negative, you pull it out and make it an i root 5. So your official answer here is x equals plus or minus i root 5 is your final answer. Um, to get the numbers on the one side, I would minus 5. So I end up getting a 4x squared equals negative 12. Uh, since it's times, I would divide by 4 on both sides. And when I do that, I would get x squared equals negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. Square root both sides there to get x equals plus or minus square root of negative 3. Uh, square, yep, I pull out the i, so it's plus or minus i root 3 is my answer. Because I can't simplify the root anymore. Alright, um, graphing now. Um, graphing complex numbers. This is the real plane and this is the imaginary plane. So what that means here is I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on the real and I go down 1, 2, 3, 4 and there is the first point. Um, this one I go over 1 and I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and that's where I would plot this point. Uh, this one I would go over 1, 2, 3, 4 on the real and up 6 and there's that point. You just plot like you would before except this is the real number and this is the imaginary so that's how you're moving up and down and left and right. When adding these, this is very simple. Just add terms that are alike. Negative 5 and 9 is a positive 4. Negative 3 i's and 5 i's is positive 2 i. Already done. Just add like terms. Even though they're i's, you just add like terms. The only problem here is when you have a negative, just distribute it through. So we get a plus 6 and a minus 9 i. So just Combine now 1 plus 6 is 7. 8i minus 9i is negative i. And there's your answer. Negative 9 and negative 15 is negative 14. Uh, 6i minus i is a positive 5i. Just adding like terms is all I'm doing. Um, distribute that through to get negative 9 and a negative 5i, so I combine like terms, negative 1 and negative 9 is negative 10, negative 7i and negative 5i is negative 12i. And there's that one done. Um, distribute this through first, so that's a negative 6 and that is a positive 9i. So now combine everything that's alike. Negative i and negative 5i that's negative 6i, right? So negative 6i and a positive 7. So negative 6i and 9i is 3i's. 7 minus 6 is 1. And the reason I put the 1 is out in front as you normally write um, the number out in front of the i. 
This is a little different. Foiling is a little different. Um, but we'll go over this here. Foil like you normally would, so 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times a negative 4i is a negative 8i, so I'm just foiling. That's all I'm doing here, what we're, we're used to doing. 3i times 1 is 3i. 3i times negative 4i, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, i times i is i squared. So we combined our like terms and I end up getting a 2 minus 5i because those two are minus 5i and minus 12i squared. Here's the catch. Remember I told you a negative 1 equals i. Well, i squared equals negative 1 and here's why. i squared is like saying i times i, right? Okay, well, and that's like saying square root of 1 times the square root of 1. And what was that rule I told you when you have pairs, whatever's underneath is your answer, right? Well, that's why we get that negative 1 there. So what that means is you can basically erase that and put a negative 1 there. So really this is like saying 2 minus 5i plus 12 because I multiplied those. And 2 plus 12 is 14, so it's like saying 14 minus 5i is really what that is. So, keeping that in mind, let's FOIL again. I get negative 3, positive 6i, positive 7i, negative 14i squared. So when I combine like terms, I get negative 3 plus 13i minus 14i squared. And we know that i squared stands for negative 1. So I'm going to put a negative 1 in there. So this is like saying negative 3 plus 13i plus 14. So I end up getting 11 plus 3i. This is just like before with foiling. So 2i times 1 is 2i. 2i times negative 4i is negative 8i squared. So I have that times 1 plus i. 2i times 1 is 2i. 2i times i is positive 2i squared. Negative 8i squared times 1 is negative 8 i squared. Negative 8i squared times i is negative 8i cubed. Okay, so when I combine like terms I get 2i plus, or sorry, 2i minus 6i squared minus 8i cubed. Now, What's the importance of that? Well, let me show you here. Um, I can separate i cubed into i squared times i. Agreed? And what did we say i squared was? Negative 1. So this is like saying negative 1 times i, which is like saying negative i. The reason I bring that up is let's substitute. I get a 2i minus 6. We know that i squared is negative 1. And I just told you that i cubed is like saying negative i. So really, I have, after all of this here, really, let's see what we have here. Really, I have a 2i, a positive 6, and a positive 8i. So when I combine like terms, my final answer is 6 plus 10i. This is my final answer there. Okay, and when we come back here, I will uh, finish off with simplifying um, i's in the denominator.